What's going on YouTube fam? Today, I <laughs> today we are gonna be talking about Premiere Pro <coughs> color grading. We're <coughs> using the <coughs> color grading. Anyways, after 20 minutes of trying to get rid of those hiccups, it's finally gone, and now we're gonna get started. If you guys are new here, my name is David Lee. I'm a photographer and cinematographer that can help you improve your visual content through tutorials, advice, and entertain you guys with my own content. So today, we are gonna be going through a full coverage of color grading in Premiere Pro CC. If you guys don't use Premiere Pro, I highly recommend it, I love it, and it's what I use for all of my videos. We're literally gonna be breaking down each aspect of it because, you know, it's something that you guys need to know and, you know, sometimes people don't actually know what each specific thing does. They kind of just play around with it. So today, I'm gonna be helping you understand exactly what each part of it does. So this is gonna be a pretty long video, so grab that popcorn, sit down, whatever, that snack, that bag of chips because it's gonna be gone before you know it. Let's just jump straight into it. I'm gonna share my screen with you guys and we're going to get started. All right, guys, so now we are in Premiere Pro CC and we're gonna kind of break down exactly what goes on with color grading we're gonna go through each aspect so first of all I want to say that a lot of people use Lumetri scopes I personally do not use Lumetri scopes Lumetri scopes is basically to keep track of your colors and what you're doing to your image so in the Lumetri scopes let's say you took your temperature and you turned all the way down and you see that the reds go up and the greens stay there but the blues are like completely shut off now it's a lot easier if you use the tint so let's say that we bring our tint all the way to green you can see in the Lumetri scopes that the green is going up while the blue and the pink is going down drastically so it's kind of just to keep track of what you're doing to your image so that you can make sure that you know what you're doing I don't really touch that I don't really focus on that I don't really care but a lot of people do so it's just there if you want to use it it's for your convenience so you can keep track of what you're doing to your own image Whew, that's a mouthful anyways now let's jump straight into the Lumetri effects the Lumetri color itself the Lumetri color tab is gonna give you everything jumbled up it's kind of Premiere Pro's way of jumbling everything that you're gonna want to use in color grading together in one space so you can stay a little bit more organized and kind of go through the aspects in each tab first of all before you jump into the basic correction i want to tell you that if you want to edit the raw clip itself where if you drag in a new clip by itself like this if you drag it in it'll like be universal across all the clips so if you want to do that you're going to want to hit master up here so let's say that we wanted it super super bright now clearly we're not going to want that but if you did it under master every time you drag the clip back in it'll be that exact color now if you don't want that and you want to keep it like central to the clip that's in the timeline that you dragged for the first time you're going to want to do it under here and not under the master that way it's not going to share the properties with the other clip anytime you drag it in now we're going to jump into the basic correction tab now the input the LUT I honestly don't use the basic correction tab for putting LUTs in I actually use the creative tab so we're going to save that one for when we get into the creative tab first of all is your temperature now the temperature is your Kelvin level it's kind of your white balance so you can either do it automatically with the eyedrop tool and set your white balance automatically or you can do it manually and kind of switch through do you want it cooler do you want it warmer and then you also have the tint which controls your magentas and your greens you can kind of pick the kind of color that you want the kind of feel that you want you maybe want more cinematic and you want to go green a little bit with a little more orange or blues or maybe you want a little cooler tone with pinks and blues it's whatever you want honestly but you can always set it automatically and kind of go for the look that you want so let's um, set it back and if you want to reset anything no matter where it is in anything in the Lumetri color tab if you double click it it goes straight back to zero so now we're gonna jump into the tones so the tones first of all the exposure the exposure is gonna bring everything up or down depending on what you want no matter if it's the highlights the shadows the whites the blacks it's gonna bring everything down equally the contrast is the difference between the highlights and the shadows and kind of whether you want like a more contrasty or non-contrasty look because you know it is the contrast 
That was a really bad explanation. But it's kind of the difference between the highlights and the shadows and the darkness and the light. So kind of how drastic do you want the difference? Or if you want it to kind of blend together a little bit, you put it less contrast. The highlights are not as drastic as the white. So the highlights are basically all your, the lighter parts of your video that aren't specifically the whites. The shadows is the same thing with the blacks. So it's everything dark about your video, except for the blacks themselves. Now the whites control the exact whites. Everything that's white in it, this is what the whites control. Everything that's brighter than white, which is nothing. It controls all the whites and everything relatively close to white. And the blacks control everything black and everything relatively close to black. So it starts getting darker and it starts getting brighter. Now saturation, we all know what saturation is, how much color is gonna be in there. But I also don't use the basic correct for the saturation either. So now that we're done with the basic correction, we're gonna jump into the creative tab. Now this is where I like to apply my LUTs. So you can either use the drop down menu if you wanna search through names, if you recognize them, or you can use these tabs here to kind of scroll through all the LUTs that you have. When you finally decide in which one that you actually want to use, you can just click here and it'll apply the LUT for you. Now you can control the intensity up to 200%, which is gonna be super, super, weird because you don't want to do that for the LUTs or you can pull it down to zero and kind of have nothing like none of your LUT in it. I like to leave it around 30 to 50 because I don't like having that too intense look. It's whatever you want. You also have a faded film. You can also apply this. It's the same thing as kind of bringing up your blacks and pulling down your contrast just a little bit, but it makes it a lot easier for you and gives you that look. Sharpen, of course, it makes your image sharper. You can control that however you want. The vibrance is kind of how how saturated how how bright certain colors are so it kind of works the same way as saturation but at the same time it isn't exactly saturation what i like to do is if i bring down the vibrance i like to bring up the saturation and vice versa so if i bring up the vibrance i bring down the saturation just to have an equal balance and let's just reset everything here just so we have a clean new video no LUT. and the shadow tint you can apply specific colors to the shadow so if you look right here in the clip you can apply this shadow let's pull it in a different image let's go right here so the shadows you can see in the plant everything starts to turn blue and whatnot so let's reset it double click and you can do the same with the highlights so everything that's highlights it changes to a specific color and that's the tint and you can also change the balance between them so let's say there was blue here orange here you can change the balance to be more than more highlight or than shadow or more shadow than highlight or kind of keep the balance in the middle which is what i like to do just to keep a clean look now we're going to jump into the curves and this is where we talk about rgb and cmy so the curves the highlights and the whites are up here and the shadows and the blacks are down here so if you ever want to make anything darker you bring it down if you want to make it lighter you pull it up so this line the central line here is basically zero the zero point so if you want to do it you're going to want to work around this line you can also do specific colors which is the r g and the b or you can do all of them at the same time which is going to be the white circle so the red circle you're going to be controlling your reds and every time you bring down your reds you're going to create cyan so it's going to become more bluish now this is kind of what i was saying about rgb and cmy so the opposite of red is cyan the opposite of green is magenta and the opposite of blue is yellow so if we reset that and we bring down our greens what are we gonna get we're gonna get a magenta look and if we bring down our blues we're gonna get a more yellow look and that's kind of the color spectrums you go from rgb to cmy whatever you want to do you can always control your reds in the highlights bring down the reds in the shadows or if you want more greens in the highlights and then less greens in the shadows or more blues in the highlights and less blues in the shadows, I mean, you're gonna end up with the same look if you put everything exactly the same. You know, you can control specific colors or you can control them all at the same time. And then here we actually have the saturation curve. So let's say that I didn't want any red. So let's click on the reds and it's gonna create three dots for us and we can control our reds. We can bring it up, we can bring it down, no reds at all. I don't like reds. Let's get it, I'm lying. At I like reds, reds are cool. But you can do that, you can choose from the preset colors made or you can actually choose and create your own dots to create a whole spectrum of colors that you don't want or want or not. And if you don't, if you want to reset it, just double click and it always resets for you. So that's the hue saturation, it's pretty easy. Make sure you guys create a point, like at least three points 
unless you want to desaturate everything else. Let's say that you didn't want blues. If you just brought it down like this, you're desaturating everything. So you're gonna wanna create two points and then choose where you want it to bring down and up and whatever your third point is what you're gonna use to control the saturation. So three points at least. Color wheels and color match. So you can actually compare videos and match the colors whether it's from the same clip a different clip it's gonna <laughs> premiere pro is gonna try its best to match the colors for you which is actually super amazing i've actually never really used this feature much but i feel like it's something that's super super helpful and saves so much time because you can actually match clips from different cameras to look exactly the same which is amazing you can control specifically the shadows. You can bring them brighter, darker. You can add a hue or whatever, a tint to them. Midtones, you can do that. Same thing, highlights, same thing. You can control basically whatever. The shadows, of course, is the darker parts. The highlights, of course, is the brighter parts. And the midtones are kind of just in the middle. Whatever is not a highlight, what's not a shadow, you kind of just get this tone in the middle. So next we have our HSL secondary. Now this is a part where it gets kind of confusing, but gets super interesting and super useful. What you can do, let's select our reds, right? So when you select a color, you can actually start keying it and choose what part, what kind of reds you want in it. What kind of, you know, spectrum of reds do you want to start controlling for this HSL secondary. So we picked our reds. We can kind of choose which lightness of red we want or what saturation of red that we want. So let's choose specifically or try to get specifically the ice cream part. Um, it's going to be a little bit hard, but you know what? It's an example. doesn't matter. Let's just go for it. So we're going to choose that. We're going to go to correction. You can denoise it. You can blur it. That's up to you. I'm not going to touch it. So let's make the ice cream blue. Okay, that didn't work out as well as I thought it would. Let's fix this. Let's choose the saturations, blah, blah. Also, you don't even have to use these preset colors. You can actually use the eyedrop tools to select which parts you want to use. So we can make the ice cream green or blue or yellow or pink or whatever color you want to. We're just messing around here. So pretty much what it does, you can isolate certain colors Let's reset this and do a different color. Let's reset it. Let's choose the color of the pot. Let's use the pot. So we can make the pot green or blue or pink or whatever, but it, it starts to get pretty bad if your footage is kind of like the same color because it's kind of hard. Unless you're using 10-bit, it, it starts to blend together. And it, it, it's kind of a confusing thing to use. It's pretty hard in my opinion. Like you have to really get experience with it. I don't really use it all that often. Sometimes I use it to control skin tones and whatnot, but honestly, I don't use it much because I'm actually kind of scared to use it because I feel like it'll mess up my footage but you can also control the temperature of the color the tints of the color the contrast the sharpen and the saturation of the color which leaves it to be an amazing tool if you know how to use it and honestly i'm not going to come out and say that i know how to use it 100 percent sometimes i use it sometimes i don't most of the time i don't because i'm kind of scared to use it because you know it's like a it's like a huge land a vast land that you know it's you got to learn but then you also have your vignette the vignette is you know pretty much black outline white outline do you where do you want it let's let's turn down the feather so you can see a little more so you get all this circle here you can choose your midpoint is it further is it closer in choose the roundness is it going to be like that or more of a circle or more of a rectangle whatever you want it to be let's get rid of it i hate vignettes vignettes are gross let's not do it and while you're going through it let's say that you had all this going on blah 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 and you were trying to do your creative side and you didn't want the basic correction and you can always hit this check mark here and turn it off so that's pretty much all there is to it and you can kind of just go run through if you want to reset it just hit reset you kind of just run through it and edit however you want i usually go through this really quick highlights if usually if you bring it down you save a lot more detail those shadows you bring down to crush those shadows a little bit and you like i like to bring up the blacks a little bit just to get that little faded look because you know faded is cool so I like to apply my LUTs, I'll bring it down to 30. I like to actually add like 20 sharpeners though, not too much, just enough to get by. Bring the 
bring this vibrance down and pull up the saturation a little bit um i don't really work with these that often but honestly if i was in lightroom i actually use them pretty often so it's all about color science and kind of how you want to work things but it's up to you so we're going to pull the curves a little bit i like to pull this down bring this up a little bit pull this up bring this down a little bit okay and then we're gonna actually pull down those reds just a tad pinks oranges and reds we're gonna no, actually no i think we're gonna bring let's bring the pinks down a little bit while we bring the reds up and then pull the oranges down let's get really complex here let's 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 really test these boundaries and so i can show you guys kind of what's going on in this photo or i'm sorry this video um we're gonna pull out the hsl secondary we're gonna take these greens here you see that you see how that just turned um super blue and the yellows too we're actually gonna take those greens and make them a little bit more vivid we're gonna make it a little warmer give it a little more pink to it pink feel to it and we're gonna brighten it a little bit you see that but then it messes up here which is what's kind of scary because you can mess up your image I try to do it in my drone shots a lot, but it also really like messes it up. But that is pretty much it. I don't really mess with these much. <laughs> that is pretty much all for today's tutorial, the quick guide run through, not even quick. It's actually super long. This is like 17 minutes. It's been, it has been 20 minutes. I'm going to stop there because that is actually the end of the tutorial. Here is the clip for you guys. So I hope that you guys could kind of understand the Loom Tree Scopes a little bit better through watching this video. I know that it is a super long video. I know that it might have been hard to sit through it all, but this is kind of what we all go through. And this is kind of just a quick way to help you guys understand, kind of run through what each little thing does, especially if you're getting started with Premiere Pro. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you liked the video. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new here or aren't already subscribed, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button because that would mean the world to me. Drop a comment, if you will, and let me know what you guys are interested in learning because I always struggle to figure out what you guys want to know. And I know that my last video was about choosing topics, but I feel like I could, I, I really appreciate it if you guys just told me what you guys wanted to know because I, I really like making the videos for you guys and I really want to be able to be the person to help you guys out and inspire you and kind of teach you the things that you really need to know right now because I know there's a lot of videos that I wish I was there. If you guys have anything specific, let me know because I'm sure that I always wanted to have that video too. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been a super long intro, a super long video altogether. Stay tuned for the next video. I hope to see all of you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you then. Have a good day, night, morning, wherever you're watching from. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay awesome and have an amazing week.